There was once in West Africa, in Nigeria, a great and a skillful hunter. And he had four fine strapping sons and a beautiful wife. And his wife was pregnant. She was big with the baby she was carrying in her womb. And one time the hunter went out into the forest with his bow and his spear and his quiver full of arrows. And all day the woman and the four sons waited. They waited for him to come home, maybe with a fat gazelle over his shoulders. But at the end of the day, when the sun set and the night came, there was no sign of him. And all night they waited, and still he didn't come back. They waited for one day, for two days, and there was no sign of him. And the woman turned to her four sons. She said, go and look for him. Go into the forest and search for him. And off went the four brothers, and they searched and they searched, and they came home shaking their heads and shrugging their shoulders. They waited for a week, he didn't return. For two weeks, for a month. And at the end of the month, a strange thing began to happen. They found that they were beginning to forget him. He was beginning to fade from their memories. And two months passed. And he was just a faint trace in the backs of their minds, that hunter with his bow and his arrows and his spear. And at the end of three months, they'd forgotten him completely. And then in the fourth month, the woman gave birth to the baby she was carrying. And he was another boy, another strapping boy, a baby boy. And soon enough, he was crawling. And soon enough, he was toddling. And soon enough, he was talking. And the very first words that the little boy said, the very first words he said to his mother were, where's my father? And the woman put her hand to her head and the four brothers shook their heads. How could we have forgotten him? How could we possibly have forgotten him? And the woman turned to her sons. She said, go and search for him again. And off went the four brothers and they searched and they searched and they searched. And this time, as they were searching, they found the scattered bones of a man lying, tangled in the undergrowth. And there was a bow with a rotten bowstring. And there was a broken spear. And there was a quiver full of rusty arrows. And they knew these were the bones of their father. And the first brother said, you know, it's a good thing that I was born with the power to bring scattered bones together. And he crouched down and he blew onto the bones. <sighs> and straight away they started jumping this way and that way and they locked together the perfect skeleton of a man lying on the ground. The second brother said, you know, it's a good thing that I was born with the power to put flesh and fat and organs and skin and hair and eyeballs and fingernails onto the bones of a skeleton. And he crouched down and he blew. <laughs> and there was the body of their father lying on the ground, perfect, but cold and dead. And the third brother said, you know, it's a good thing that I was born with the power to give life to a dead man. And he crouched down and he blew. <sighs> and straight away there was the rise and the fall of the breath. And there was a pulse. He was alive. But it was as though he was in a deep, deep sleep, in a coma. And the fourth brother said, you know, it's a good thing that I was born with the power to give speech and movement and laughter to a man in deep sleep. And he crouched down and he blew. <sighs> and the hunter sat up. And he rubbed his eyes and he looked about himself. He said, where have I been? And they said, Father, you were dead, but now you're alive. And he nodded and he picked up the two halves of the broken spear and the quiver full of rusty arrows and the bow with the rotten bowstring. And they went back to the village. And when the woman saw her husband, she was so happy. She threw her arms around his neck and they sat down together and they ate. And when they'd finished eating, the hunter wiped the grease from the corners of his mouth. And he went across, he sat by the fire. He picked up a piece of dark red ebony. And he took his knife and he began to carve the wood. And he carved and he carved. And all night the sun sat and they watched him. 
And all the next day he was carving and carving and carving and it was the most beautiful carving. It was as though he was carving everything that he'd become part of when he was dead. The trees, the birds, the flowers, the animals, the sun, the moon, the stars. And for three days he carved and carved and it was the most beautiful thing in the world. And then he got oil and he rubbed it into the wood and he polished it. And then he found a cow's tail and he fixed the cow's tail to the end of the piece of wood and he made a cow tail switch, a fly whisk for whisking away the flies. And he turned to his sons and he said, this is for the one who saved my life. And the first brother said, then it's mine. I was the one who brought all your scattered bones together. The second one said, what are you talking about? It's mine. I was the one who gave you fat and organs and muscles and skin and hair and eyeballs and fingernails. And the third one said, no, it's mine. I was the one who gave you life. Where would you be without life? And the fourth one said, it's mine. I was the one who gave you speech and movement and laughter. And what's a man without speech and laughter? And the hunter looked at his sons and he shook his head and he said, no, it's for the little one. He was the one who remembered me. And as long as a person is remembered by somebody, as long as a person is truly remembered by somebody, he's not altogether dead.